you tell me uh, your full name, please, and your relationship to uh, Bishop Freeman? Okay. Uh, my name is Dave Freeman, uh, Sr. Um, my dad is Bishop Theodore Anthony Freeman, Sr. Um, that's pretty much okay. my dad is. So tell me about what you know of your, or tell me when you first, your father first started to talk about being, uh, serving in World War II. When did you first start to hear stories? Well, over the years, Dad would talk about uh, different times of being in the military. We had the uh, um, the encyclopedia, and he would pull it out every now and then and say, well, you know, I was in World War II. We knew that he was in World War II, my brothers and I, had two older and one younger. We knew about him just being in the Navy, but that was about it. And we knew that he had been to uh, the Pearl Harbor area. Uh, but that was all we knew. He really didn't talk much about it. And then a year or so before the uh, project started of uh, the World War II uh, organizations, it was nice because he started to tell us a little more and found out that he was not just in the war, because we assumed that, uh, we knew that he was working as a, uh, a cook or an assistant, you know, one of the servers because they were limited on what they could do with African Americans in the military. And uh, he told us that he served the uh, captains and things, and that was about it. Then he started to become a little more in depth as we asked more questions about, well, what ship were you on? And he said, Big Mo. Or I said, Big Mo, well, what's, this? what's Big Mo? And he started to explain to us it was the USS Missouri. So the USS Missouri, well, based on things we had read in history, classes when we were younger, there was a lot of fighting that that particular ship did. And then Dad really started to open up, and we found out that he had not just the job as a uh, person serving captains on the ship, but he also had a second job working the guns. And that's when we started to find out the stories about how um, when he was involved in uh, working the gun, that uh, there was a kamikaze pilot that had uh, attacked their ship. And uh, we said, well, what did you do? He said, well, we manned the guns. We kept handing, handing the ammo. And uh, we found out later that uh, that kamikaze pilot that actually struck the ship actually struck his gun turret. And uh, he, he started to describe in detail which let me know that it was something that had stuck in his mind. He was 19 years old, and that's a very impressionable age at that time. And to experience the death of another individual, which was the first time he had ever seen him like really pass away. And so he described in detail, and the way he described it, as I can describe to you, the detail, you could see the picture, the pilot was swinging around towards the left side, coming in at them and they're firing and throwing ammo up to the other gentlemen and they're, uh, all you're hearing is blasting and blasting and then all of a sudden the uh, airplane slams into the gun turret. Their machine gun, the pilot's machine guns get stuck in their gun turret. Half of the plane falls into the ocean along with half of the uh, pilot. The other half is stuck and ends up falling onto the uh, deck of the ship. That's vivid. When you start, when your father started to share more details with you in the last year, did your um, relationship with him change in any way? Did the way you see him change in any way? What was the impact on you of his sharing of his service? Um, no, it didn't change uh, that much because I have a strong love for my father as my brothers and I do. Uh, but we started to understand why he never spoke of these things. I'm not sure if it was because he felt that we wouldn't be able to handle it or he wanted to wait until we were older so we would understand it. But uh, no, it. we love them no matter what, but to find out that he had went through such a tough time and came through, you know, miraculously, you know, without uh, a scratch, that, that just made us want to love him even more. 
And do you know why he started to open up? Uh, did, did, um, you said, well, yeah, his, what did you? Well, Dad's health was starting to, you know, deteriorate a little bit. And sometimes, you know, that uh, communication is the best tool to find out what's going on with an individual as opposed to saying, well, write out your feelings. Sometimes you can express your viewpoint much quicker uh, verbally than you can through a letter or some kind of writings or tapings. And we started to talk with him more and say, well, you know, what happened on that ship? Uh, give us a little more detail. What were your duties? And uh, he said, well, you know, I was this and he, he did the different things that he had to do, but we could see that his health was starting to deteriorate. And as the uh, segment came around for him to uh, talk, we noticed how he started to have a little more energy because he was starting to, it was starting to seem like he was just kind of like going downhill a little bit for us. So tell me, it was actually your suggestion, I think, that, that really led to us being able to speak with your father. Tell us how that came about. Well, there's a gentleman that was, uh, I knew named Dave Noreen and uh, we were talking one day and he said that they were thinking about doing a segment on uh, World War II, uh, our people that were in World War II and I said well my dad was in World War II and I described to him the different things that I had known that dad had just recently started sharing and with that we decided hey let's give uh, dad a call and see if he'd be interested and he was. And there is some, tell us a little more about um, what was it like for him to prepare for his interview? Did he share any of that with you? Dad preparing for the interview. We all of a sudden found that Dad had uh, posters of, uh, let me rephrase that, he had drawings of MacArthur, which was you know, the general, and uh, he had also had uh, a large scale uh, portrait of the signing of the uh, surrender. See, Dad just wasn't in on the uh, USS Missouri as a uh, person serving the captains and a gun, uh, working with the gun tour. He also was there when they signed the uh, what do we want to call that? The uh, surrender. The surrender. And uh, it's an interesting story. He didn't get to tell. But uh, the first uh, signing that they did, they had to redo it because uh, the Japanese signed in the wrong place. And they were all given, all the members of the ship were given an actual copy of the original where it was signed in the wrong place. Then they redid the... Uh, signing and had him sign in the correct place. But he started to pull out lots of memorabilia. So you got to see some things that yes. you didn't know he had. Yes, yes. And did he make those drawings? Is he an artist as well? Dad is a great artist. Uh, he's one of those uh, people that can draw you and you look like yourself. Uh, the actual flesh and little spots on your face if you have them. Uh, He's just that great of an artist. I mean, he, I've seen some of his drawings that he's, since the program has started to pull out, uh, he can do woodland scenes that are just spectacular. But he loves doing puzzles. <laughs> oh, I, Dad will pull out a puzzle that says 5,000 pieces and work on it. Hmm. I, I thank God for his patience. And he'll do that now. And how old is your father now? If I'm correct, Dad is about 82. Okay. What other impact did, uh, how else did your father prepare to talk to WILO TV for his interview? What other things did you notice that he was doing? Well, Dad uh, started to become a little more spry, uh, uh, more bubbly, wanting to talk with us, discuss things. Uh, he also contacted um, groups of individuals that had been on the Missouri because he uh, started contacting the uh, different organizations uh, within the military of retired military people. I mean, he actually started doing a lot more than just kind of 
waiting for his time. Wow. So, so you actually gave him that, uh, that want, that need, that ability to express himself where he wasn't able to before. Wow, and I, th I think I, I cut, I think my words went over the first part of that sentence. Could you tell us again what you felt W.I.L. gave your father with this opportunity? Or what was it gave him hope. It gave him a chance to really express his viewpoint. I mean, before, people would just hear him. Now they're listening to him without attitude or without a, uh, what would I say? without criticizing. I mean, you, he was, we realized with dad that he had not just gone into the military when the way he was speaking, but he was a part of history. And to think of, think of it, a member of your family is a part of history, and not just history, but American history, and part of the military, the pride that you have, come on, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. And did your father, and he came to the, uh, the Rantoul event that we had. I saw you and, and him, and, and we acknowledged him in the audience. And tell me, what, what, was that also part of this sort of change in your father? Uh, when we went to see the Tuskegee Airmen in the Rantoul when WILL, I had put on the uh, program there. Uh, Dad was able to sit in the audience and listen and... Later on, he got a chance to talk with some of the Tuskegee Airmen and explain to them that he had uh, attended Tuskegee University. And so that was a great time for they were able to talk about, the, oh, you know, the location there and the fact that he had worked on the military base while they were actually training at different times. That made him feel good. Um, it was a change in him because Dad was always sitting at home, except for going to uh, his schooling, which has a, was at adult ed. He would normally just kind of sit at home. But all of a sudden, we would try to call them, and we'd have to try to catch them on the cell phone because they were at the uh, museum now before. This is important. Dad had been living in Ray and Tool. He never would go to the museum. Never. Because of the turmoil of that day that he had experienced with the uh, kamikaze pilot. Now he was going after the Tuskegee Airmen and WILL had set the uh, program. Dad was going. We called them to see what they were doing. Oh, we're hanging out with the uh, Tuskegee guys and gals. And uh, oh, we're going to go flying with them a little later. And it was like, wait, what about us? <laughs> <laughs> you had to get on your dad's appointment book. Now. Yes. <laughs> they were quite busy. Uh, we told them, well, we'll meet you for breakfast got to catch you later. We've got to hang out with the group. Uh, they're getting one of the other planes in, and we're going to go check that out, too. Uh, we're also going to go over to um, visit some of the uh, naval men at the, uh, what is that, in Danville, the uh, VA hospital, because there were some people that they knew there. And it's like, wow. Uh, well, call us when you get a chance. <laughs> I mean, this really was the result of him being invited to tell his story. Yes. It made that big of a difference. It, you allowed him to express his true feelings and share his heart with the world in a way that he had never been able to express it before. Wow. And did, when his piece was on television, did you sh share that experience together? Or what, what did you all do? Uh, well, we called around to all the relatives, and uh, there's quite a few. There's, my grandmother had 36 of us just in this area and uh, called all the relatives that told them that it was coming on. Um, those that got a chance to see it, and later on we were able to show them the DVD, they were standing up and cheering, you know, I mean, at the, uh, at the end of his presentation. They, it was kind of funny, some of them said, now they know my dad, okay, these are his nieces and nephews. I want his autograph. I want to take him out to dinner. They expressed that to him, and it just, you know, it touched Dad. You could see him swelling up, and and not with pride, because he's not that kind of a man, but it was, it was heartfelt, mm -hmm. very heartfelt. Wow. 
So this was, let's see, we're now in March, and this was, uh, the event was in September, and I think Denise interviewed your father before, uh, a month or so before that. How is your father now? Is this continued? Is he? He's, uh, he's doing better. Uh, well, he's still trying to get, you know, you think about, I listen to uh, the news a lot now. This is going to be about that. I listen to the news a lot, and I listen to about how the gentlemen and ladies are coming back from Iraq and how they're trying to get medical benefits. And here's a man that served in World War II, and he still hasn't gotten his benefits, but he's struggling, but he's getting there. Oh, well, he does, hasn't had his benefits? <laughs> no. no. Okay, there's a lot of stories in here. We're not getting that. I'm really focusing on one narrow thing, but I can tell there's a lot more. Okay, oh. wow. So he's, he's hanging in there. He's doing pretty